In this video, I take a look at the new features and changes in Capture One Pro 20. If you would like to check out Capture One Pro, then please see the links in the description below. And if you find this video interesting or useful, then please like and subscribe. The first change that we have is a brand spanking new scrolling tool tab. And the tool tab is now split into two sections. A fixed section here and a scrolling section here. And you can scroll it with the scroll bar or use your mouse wheel which I'm using here. I think this is really nice. And these fixed sections can actually be unfixed on a tool by tool basis. So I can grab a tool like so and just drop it. And that tool becomes part of the scrolling section. And if I grab the last tool and drop it, the whole tool tab scrolls. Great if you prefer a pure scrolling tool tab. I can select the three dots on any tool and then choose move tool to pinned area. Or I can just grab a tool and then just put it over the pinned area and let go and that's pinned. Absolutely brilliant. And of course you can do it with any of the tools in any order or you can rearrange the tools the scrolling tools or the fixed tools, as you used to be able to. You used to be able to hover over sliders and then use your scroll wheel to move them. Now you need to hold down Alt to perform the same operation, which is fine. Understandable with the scrolling. You can change the behavior back to the old method where you use the scroll wheel to change the sliders. All you have to do is go into Edit and Preferences and then Scroll Wheel Changes Slider values. Now when you hover over a slider, your scroll wheel will move it, as before. Very nice. And if you hold Alt and use your scroll wheel, it will scroll, so you have a choice. Now I think this is excellent. A really flexible, superb system. Here on the Colour tab, we have a brand spanking new basic colour editor. We still have our advanced and skin tone editors, but the basic colour editor is now brand new. Instead of the old pie chart with the six sections we used to have, we now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight colour sections, plus global, which changes all of the colours. And that's really nice. It's much better than the old six section pie chart, which was really limited. I think this is much better, especially for Lightroom users. OK, let's pick blue to change the sky colour. So we can change the hue, more magenta, more cyan. We can change the saturation. Up and down it goes. And we can also change the lightness. Really nice. Let's take a look at the reds. Hue, more orange, more magenta. Saturation and lightness. That's really rather cool. And also, if we use this little tool here, the Direct Colour Editor, we can use our mouse to directly pick the colours and change them on the image. So just pick a colour, then move left and right to change the hue. Moving your mouse up and down changes the saturation, like so. And if we hold down Alt and move left and right, it changes the lightness. Using this tool, it will change all of the component colours of any colour you pick. In this case, the blue and a little of the cyan. So it changes the colour you pick really accurately. Nice. And if we click on this little double arrow icon, we have the ability to completely customise the mouse behaviour. So we can assign the hue, saturation and lightness functions to mouse and keyboard combinations. Superb. It's completely customisable. Brilliant. And also, if we click the three dots on the tool just here, we can change our ranges. We can change the range of the hue that each colour button affects. This is really powerful. And this isn't global, this can be set for each individual image. You can have separate ranges and colour adjustments for every image. Fantastic. And when you upgrade your images from an old version of Capture One, it will automatically convert the colours from the old system to the new system. Phase One have also improved the noise reduction. And after a few tests, I can definitely say that the noise reduction is better. 
Here on the right is an image from Capture 112, and here on the left, an image from Capture 120. So this is me using the tools from both versions to try and get the best noise reduction that I can. And looking at it, I think the results speak for themselves. You can clearly see that the noise on this image on the right from Capture 112 has not been cleaned up as well as this version from Capture 120, especially this top part here. I think this new noise reduction algorithm is great. They've done a really good job. The high dynamic range tool has had a major overhaul. If we take a look at this sky, you can see it's very much overexposed. But never fear, Capture One Pro 20 is here. If we bring down the highlights like so, we can recover the detail in the sky beautifully. In the last version, we could only recover highlights by moving the slider one way. Whereas now the slider goes both ways, it adds and subtracts so that you can increase the highlights too. You may just want to add an edge to your highlights, so if I bring down the exposure, like so, and then increase the highlights to bring out the lighter parts of the clouds, and then set the exposure to the point where it's just under clipping. Now I have nice dark moody clouds with bright highlights, really nice. Okay, let's just reset the exposure back to something sensible and also do the same with the highlight recovery. And we will take a look at one of the new controls, which is whites. Now this whites control affects the very, very whites, the lightest of the highlights. It will give you a chance to control and put more definition into the very, very bright parts of your image, like we have just here to expose the detail in the very lightest parts, or just to control the lightest parts, just to bring them down a touch. This gives you that extra little bit of control of the highlights like no other raw editor has. I think this is really, really nice. And also we have the same thing with the shadows. We now have a shadow slider that used to just go up to bring the shadow detail up, but now we can bring the shadows down. Now we can use the shadow slider not only to recover detail but to increase contrast to create a nice moody look if you like. Lovely. And to go with the shadows we don't only have the whites which go with the highlights we have the black slider which complements the shadows. This would allow you to bring out detail from the extreme dark parts of your images. Here we go we can reveal the detail in these little dark holes in the trees. We now have detail in all these little extreme black areas. I can see this being especially useful for things like dark landscape scenes. Balancing the shadows and the black sliders, you should now have excellent control over the dark detail in your images. For me, this is probably the most important change to Capture 120. And obviously, you can bring down the black slider from zero if you want to make the darkest colours or the blacks in your image very dark. This really does give us more control than we've ever had. I absolutely love it. And now to the crop tool, which phase one have really improved. Let's take a look. And the first thing you can see that's different is that we have little tags on the corners to make the crop tool more visible against your images. It makes it much more easy to see where we're grabbing. Only a little change, but it makes all the difference. And they've also enhanced the keyboard controls to make it easier to control your crop. So first up, if I hold Alt while I crop, it actually scales from the center, which is really handy. Say you want to frame a certain object, in this case, the window here, but you just want to change the size of the object within that frame, within that crop. Now you can resize the crop without actually moving the crop away from the object. Fantastic. The next one is if we switch to an unconstrained crop, and as we all know, with unconstrained cropping, it doesn't keep the same ratio whilst you crop, or it's very difficult to do that. Let's say now that I have the aspect ratio that I want, and I want to resize the crop, but I actually don't want to change the aspect ratio. I'm happy with it. All I have to do is hold down shift, grab the handle in the corner, and now as I resize, the aspect ratio stays exactly the same. Excellent. 
And if I change my mind, I can. I can let go of shift and rescale like so. Maybe I want to move it. And once moved, I want to keep the ratio, but resize it again. I can, like so, holding shift. If I hold both shift and alt, it keeps the ratio and resizes from the center. Brilliant. Let's just go back to the original ratio to continue playing. And I'll just pop that out and make it landscape. Very nice. Now it's time to show you another handy shortcut. If I just drag all the corners to the edges like so, just to somewhat reset it. Now, in previous versions, if you wanted to rotate your crop, you would have to go to the outside of the crop and then rotate like so. But now you don't have to. All you have to do is hold down control. If you hold down the control key while your cursor's anywhere on the image, it comes up with the rotate icon. And now you can rotate your image from anywhere within the crop. You don't have to start with your cursor on the outside of the crop. Brilliant. Really, really useful. Okay, so let me just pop these edges back again. Now I have no edges to grab the rotate from, so I just hold down control and rotate. Superb. Phase 1 have really improved the layer copying functionality. For copying layers from one image, to another image. This image has three layers, this cockerel here. It has a contrast, I've put a vignette in, and I've added some orange into the midtones in this layer. Now, say we want to copy these layers from the cockerel to this image here, which has no adjustment layers. All we have to do is select both layers, the primary and then the secondary, or the source and then the destination. And then I just hit this little copy icon here and now we can choose which layers we copy. We can copy all or any amount we like. We'll deselect the ones we don't want to just copy the vignette then click apply and now when we look at our destination image it now contains the vignette layer and you can also choose more than one secondary or destination image so I'll click on the primary or source image again, then I'll choose more than one secondary, two. Hit the copy icon. And on the dialog, I think I'll just select color and contrast. I'll deselect the vignette and then just hit apply. If we take a look at our destination images. Now we already had the vignette, which we copied and it's added the contrast and the colour layers to it. It used to just replace the layers, obliterate them, but now you can copy and add. Excellent. And if we take a look at the next image, the second image we copied to is copied just the colour and the contrast, as they're the two layers we selected for copy. This is great. It means you can copy something like a vignette or a colour grade from one image to multiple images without harming the layers that are there already. And finally, a few miscellaneous changes. They've improved the icons in the toolbar, and they've added text under the icons. This should make it much easier for beginners. It should make the program easier to navigate. And the masking tools here have been put into a nice little strip. They used to be in a drop-down menu. This should make it much quicker for general masking operations, I suppose. You can now easily change the colour of the proofing border. Just right click on the border. You can turn the border off and on with this icon. Just right click and select the colors you like. This is really, really handy for checking your images. The resolution of the thumbnails has been improved to make them clearer, which is nice. And we have a brand new white balance picker, which apparently should work better with noisy images. Let's just zoom into this area and then set the white balance to something which is obviously wrong. Grab our white balance picker like so and we'll just select white balance from this noisy area here. That's fine. Really good white balance. The process button for process recipes has moved. It's now here. Instead of being down in the process summary, it's now in the process recipes. We have improved DNG support, which means that DNG files from unsupported cameras should have better colour, which is nice. We have Select Next When, which improves automation of culling. We have improvements to the adjustments clipboard, 
where it will automatically collapse items that haven't been adjusted on the image. It should make it easier to navigate the clipboard. And finally, it has a whole bunch of changes to the keyboard shortcuts. I checked them out, they're quite logical and make the whole editing experience flow a lot better. I think this is an excellent update with seriously good improvements to the tools that I use every day. Adding even more power to what I think is the best RAW editor on the market. Well done, phase one.